Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues in which we're playing as a royal. Now at the time it's recording, um, I've played them relatively recently, but we are doing the A to Z series for Old World Blues, so here we're at. Quest for the Holy Gek. Nearly 40 years ago, the humble chosen one, a grandchild of our father, set out to save us from calamity and destruction. Reaching for all 13. Uh, she soon arrived at the Vault Dweller's former home, now overrun with a pack of intelligent death claws. The chosen one set out from a royal home, facing a near impossible battle against a hostile wasteland. They only knew their village, their people were dying, and that the only secrets of nearby vaults could save it. Their journeys through the nearby vaults, which would take them through the likes of Shady Sands, Vault City, and Klamath, was fraught with peril, but like it all, the chosen one learned the importance of trustworthy allies. Full purse can buy many a solution. How a big gun or stick can make a whole lot of things easier. Now, apparently, when I first played this after the 4.0 update came out, I chose this one, so we're going to go with the importance of trustworthy allies. The Enclave Oil Ring. With his tribe kidnapped by the evil Enclave, the chosen one made a fated journey to their offshore base. As the only hope to save the people, if not the entire continent, from the Enclave's designs, everything rested on the chosen one. And we do have a cup of coffee to keep us nice and warm. Arrival, Holy 13. After a long journey across California, the chosen one finally arrived at Vault 13. They found a startling surprise in her ancestor's home, now inhabited by a tribe of intelligent yet friendly death claws. Far more powerful than the chosen one or any one of their potential companions. And the water chip hidden just behind them, which chosen one was forced to cooperate at least to some extent. Um, once inside the vault, the chosen one found a new unique status quo. The descendants of, the, of those that had stayed in Vault 13 lived in tandem with the death claws and had created a thriving society together. Yet what shocked the chosen one was the most how the humans of Vault 13 had put aside their prejudice and accepted their new partners. The ordered nature of the tribe as each member knew their part. The fear that still rule the death clause, in particular of a certain Dr. Schrebe. Well, I chose this one last time, so we're going to go with this one. <coughs> the giant faces. Well, the chosen one believed to be their moment of victory was soon dashed by a vision from the tribal healer Hakunin. The people of our royal have been kidnapped by soldiers in giant metal bird cages, or giant metal birds, and taken somewhere into the sea. The chosen one's mission to save the tribe became a true far more little sense, with certain death awaiting those that were taken into Enclave captivity. Investigating the matter to the best of their ability, the Chosen One came upon several promising leads, the best of which was the Xi Emperor, a Chinese pre-war supercomputer capable of predicting every possible outcome, the Navarro military base, a well-organized but surprisingly penetrable Enclave hold. Ooh, basic power armor type would be very nice. The dr drugs in Urino gave them the needed courage. Ooh, 95 political power too. Um, but the last time I did this one, apparently I chose about the Navarro military base, which obviously was awesome. Uh, I don't have political power. I like the thing that has this as unforeseeable consequences. Um, likes a she. You know what? Uh, drugs. Do we like drugs? I think we like drugs on this channel, at least selling them. We don't like doing them, but at least selling them is what we want to do. Uh, I will choose that one for right now, if we can get any more political power that way. We have to be elite for that. Um, Chitza, which I have played this before. We're gonna get that guy. Um, this would be pretty good to do. Let's do She Emperor. Let's see what that one's like. The Doctor from San Francisco. Hailing from San Francisco, a father of a strange doctor arrived north of Rancheria, finding a new home in Arroyo. Vault 13 is a young one. The survivors of Vault 13 were among those who were rescued by the chosen one, the Enclave Oil Rig. A child, far too young to remember these events, was lucky, was one of the lucky few that actually escaped. Which is very cool. I love Old Robles, it is AZ, but San Francisco born follower train. The kidnapping of the people of the royal at the hands of the Enclave meant the death of Hakunin, the tribal healer. Despite their best effort, the tribe spent years fruitlessly searching for a suitable replacement. Hakunin had no peoples and left a little behind in terms of medical advice. Although a number of a royal tribes people had some level, level of medical knowledge, none rivaled the old coot's skill and expertise. A lucky break came through when the traders brought word of an ex follower who had taken up the residence in the Packers, suddenly convincing him to settle in the royal tribe. The Chosen One journeyed south to the happy camp. Once there, the Chosen One found Demetrius, a San Francisco-born doctor, having split from the followers due to his willingness to accept this violence. Demetrius had wandered north, providing small amounts of aid in return for various payments. He had heard of a royal, and the Chosen One, but wasn't it certain it wasn't time for him to settle permanently. Knowing that a royal needed the skills, the Chosen One appealed to his empathy, urging him to help a royal. Our compensation and safety for himself? Remembering that the waste was a dangerous place, where accidents fall low travelers. Well, let's go with very nice. Let's go with a nice dude for now. I'm not sure if I did that last time, but we'll see. And I'm not sure anybody... I kind of want to use robots. But I want to kind of wait and see. The humble warrior of a royal. The younger cousin of the chosen one, a timid hunter, was forced by circumstance to become a warrior in general. Then again, robots are very hard to make. Um, we don't have enough stuff here for them, so we're going to make a few infantry divisions first. We'll make it three for now. The other bloodline. Out of the destruction of the oil rig by the chosen one, uh, at the Vault 13 survivors settled in a royal with the tribals. Or with the tribes, really. Numerous children were born in the years after, which I 
Yeah. Uh, one which was a young girl named Chitso. There was a healthy rivalry between the children of a royal tribe and involved dwellers that defined the early childhood of many of the young children. And Chitsa established herself as a cutting leader behind many of the Vault children's sport teams in mock battles. But Chitsa one noticed her from an early age and watched her grow up from a leader among her peers to a manipulative negotiator. Able to steal deals from even the most unwilling traders, her quick wit and capacity for charisma made a position so as tribal negotiator certainty. Having seen Chitsa grow from a young girl to a proud woman gave the chosen one a sense of pride for the next generation of a royal. In particular, they were glad to see capacity for leadership, unsatiable lust for power. I think it is one last one. So, capacity for leadership. Won't make everyone nice, maybe? I don't know. We'll see what happens. No guarantees for anything here. I like having five research slots though, which is super nice. Yeah, but Timmy Hunter's force become by circumstance become a warrior and a general. Investing in Happy Camp. Despite his success travels, chosen one knows little about the Packers. Extremely reclusive. Their society seems to be organized around a number of desperate camps. Disparate. Oh, high security, high stakes? Yes, please. <coughs> a decade ago. A rich baron from Reading going by the investor brought a team of merchants mercenaries north. So they were building from an old town prison in Medford. From there, the team began to travel from town to town, purchasing criminals for the new scheme. Fearful beginnings. Nilagor was the youngest cousin of the Chosen One, and yet, despite his strong posture and fit body, none shared his cousin's bravery. His dog, Smoke, was one of the few friends uh, he had growing up. He was seized constantly for his weakness and timidity, but never fought back. Although he could have easily knocked out a cold number of his tormentors. But the Enclave's arrival shattered his desire for a meek life. Those who fought back were killed, and Nurk could only bring himself to watch the massacre. His demeanor changed entirely once in an Enclave capacity, or captivity. He began to steal himself for battle, trading inc incessantly, and provoke his captors as often as he could. The chosen one barely recognized Nagor when he arrived at the oil rig that a once calm and quiet cousin transformed into an aggressive and fearsome man. After escaping the oil rig and returning to a royal, Nagor began to return to his old self but never entirely forgot the man that he had briefly become. Nervous and worried, Nagor approached the chosen one for advice. Chosen one. Urged him to remember humanity and use violence only as a last resort. One of the dangers of waste and the necessity of killing. Make his own decision it was his life after all. Well, well let's all be nice for now. We'll see what happens. We're, he is messianic, huh? Nice. Investigating happy camp, of course. Um, let's see what else is around here. It was once a peaceful fort. A small port town of Eureka had only managed to recover from the Great War. Faced with imperious, impervious uh, Marlurk infestation, the unconventional tactics were worth learning from. A child of an old friend. Sulek was an old friend and a valuable companion on the search for the Holy Gek, an enclave oil rig. He has passed on since then, but his child... Averon now leads the tribe. Nice. I'm going to go this person. We need a lot of political power here. Uh, Northern California has changed a lot since uh, the Chosen One's quest. 30 years ago, only the most developed city, Shady Sands, of all city, bothered to maintain a permanent jail or police force in most towns, being caught for theft and a beating. Anything worse required the application of shock and justice. The emergence of Max Sec in California politics has changed the dynamic drastically. The process is simple but lucrative. Caravans are sent to nearby towns or cities, asking for any one of criminals. A decent fee is paid to whoever presents a criminal for incarceration, so long as they can show some proof of the guilt. The Max Sack Caravan then returns to Medford, bound in tow, and promptly sets about using the new prisoners for heavy labor. The materials produced from Max Sack can range from rare minerals to rude or rewire circuitry, but are largely followed under the general guise of crafting metal components. These materials are then exported to various nations, turning Max Sack a healthy profit. This egregious profit is in no small part thanks to the atrocious living conditions present in Max Sack prisons. Prisoners are barely fed enough to stay alive, and even those hardened criminals face little respite under Max Sack guards' gaze. Bad people, certainly, but do they deserve a life like this? The focus should be on rehabilitation whenever possible. Oh, wow. Look at those civvies we get. Oh, goodness. We're making some millions already. We're going to do all this stuff. And then prison and building expertise. <coughs> the reconstruction began by the mercenaries was continued by Max X's new work workforce. Slowly, decrepit complex became a veritable fortress, building defenses. We won't build a workforce similar to Max Sec, but we can model our own defenses after theirs. We have built defenses against enemies both inside and outside their own state building a nation. The area around Max Sec is by no means uninhabited. The native people first viewed the prison with caution, but the fruits of the imported labor led to rapid growth in the region's prosperity. The quiet ones. They began as quiet shells of the presence that regional leaders are only vaguely aware of. A seemingly small group of hunters lived off whatever game they could find in the forest, rarely interacting with the nearby settlements. The perception of apartments forced to change, however, when a trader who's, who'd lost the wood land road when his 20 hunters work in unison to bring down three death claws in quick succession. The startled trader told a story to the people of Arroyo, a story which soon began to spread like wildfire to nearby towns. The chosen one had no easy task tracking down the isolation of survivors, but still managed to trace them back to the camp. I initially greeted with suspicion that the chosen ones eventually able to win their trust or at least subdue their hostility. I that these packers, as they saw, call themselves, were no threat to Arroyo. The chosen ones took time to study their cultures and traditions. Intelligent people, they've learned to live with the land, not exploit it. Well, two hunters, but I can still worry for them. Hopefully we can spare aid. Probably water. Water might become an issue sometime. 
Yeah, 15, but you never know. Let me take other people, we'll see what happens. Playing from the foragers. The Packers are foragers by nature with an inherently inherent ability to seek out sources of life and fresh water. Although the Gak has helped revitalize the Royal, we have yet to fully understand all of its boons and has brought us, and the Packers can no doubt help. Wilderness supply operations. The Packers use a number as well hidden past to move quickly around the forest at home. The methods are worth studying, even if we aren't able to look at the trails themselves. A stack of shells. Eureka is a town of no note when the chosen one last ventured across the wastes. Overrun with Marlurks. A perversant a perseverant group of survivors have made it to their crusade to return to their ancestors' home. Well, they eventually did. Led by an elite fire team known as the Port Masters. They decided to use their plentiful military expertise or experience on foreign shores. Their homeland is a mountainous waste, so instead of farming, they ship mercenaries across the west coast, trading guns and lives for food and supplies. Thankfully, they lack the population and desire to expand as an empire and instead view war as a means of its sustenance. Eureka's mercenaries show profit or bring profit to shores. They have almost no space for workshops, but somehow they make do. I'm going to go to the last side for now. Skinning lessons from Clement. Skinning a gecko is an arduous task, and even as the slightest mistake can make a hideout raid useless. A new technique invented by Klamath trappers allows us to quickly slay, skin an animal without damaging the hide. Trapper techniques. Trappers from Klamath are experts at tool use, navigation, and pathfinding. Teaching these techniques to our soldiers would improve the versatility of our army. New hunting weapons. While well, travelers like to use crude weapons to hunt, we can do better than spears. Producing or procuring new rifles to our trappers will help allow them to hunt more efficiently. Still, it's old ways. Since Avaron took control of the tribes, He's worked tirelessly to prepare his people for the realities of Northern California. They began to modernize and give up their old ways, but we still have much to learn for their trouble ferocity. Trouble weapons workshops. No matter their backwardness, Umbro weaponsmith has developed creative ways to construct weapons for the tribe. Mimicking these techniques might increase their weapons production. They abandoned their old ways. Solakad uh, traveled across the way some of the Chosen One during the quest for the Gek. While he has since passed on, son Avaron now leads the Umbro tribe. Taught the wonder of the technology and civilization by his father and the Chosen One, Avaron, uh, has turned his tribe away from the traditional spiritual ways. He has instead opted to encourage the discovery in a permanent settlement, pioneering Aeroian village techniques for members of his tribe. There has been a resistance within the tribe, though, especially among Solak's generation, but the most of Umbrans have accepted the changes. Taking a brave new step, and certainly for the better. Confident they will remember the traditions, traditions as they move forward. And one of those took hold. Chosen One is a world's hero, nearly single-handedly saving the tribe from starvation in the Enclave, and nearly every adult and child worships is the ground the, child, the Chosen One walks on. The way so called for the Chosen One, and they know that there is business yet unfinished for them outside the bounds of Arroyo. Disappearance in the night. We awoke this morning to a strange feeling. Across the royal systems awoke in a haze, silently missing a familiar presence. We didn't realize until afternoon what we were feeling. It took until nightfall for us to openly speak of it. The Chosen One had departed into the waste. A number of notes and journals had been left behind, somewhat resembling the memories once left by the grandparents. Most of their gear had been taken along with the old highwaymen that once roamed with. What a, while the time of mourning has been declared, decisions now rest solely in the hands of the tribal council. While they always look together in unison, it would be best to select a temporary council leader. Someone has shepherd both their tribe and a council into this new dome. A chosen one is gone. Choosing a leader. The time has come to select a new council leader. They will hold a position for a year, during which time they will be tasked with maintaining a final review of council decisions. They will now ask as a dignitary and figurehead, with a demeanor of influencing how our tribe members conduct themselves for the coming year. I kind of go with these guys, this dude. Someone has gone. Nagor, the humble warrior, shall lead the council. Chitta is clearly the right pick to lead the, the uh, council. <coughs> which I chose that one first last time. Dimitri will show an outsider's worth as, as council leader. Her way, which I did last time. We got this guy, Doctor's in Intellectuals, which I did do some of his stuff as well. Up a hill. Hmm. Air Doctrine. Um, batch 30. On this side, deploy the Merry Men. Workshop Recruitment, too. Victory Economics. So I did say I want to go with robots, I think, in this campaign. This guy's got infantry, though. Nagor has good karma. She has to have good karma too. An army for the people. I don't know. I might use consequence to go back and get use infantry. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I don't like how you don't really get too many different op you have options here, but they're not great. Um, structure. Building a good oh. you know, national spirit building a great society. Intellectuals, intellectuals. Nothing is. There's not too much about the doctor, about having good karma for him. So he's a safe bet to do immediately. He's extremely safe. 
because Dimitri has good karma. <clears throat> his research or cycling. That's not bad to do, too. Exploiting the land. Dimitri has to have bad karma. Um, but for him, over here, people, 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 um, doesn't matter. Good karma, more defense, but it's only for a year. Bad karma doesn't matter, ultimately. Which does kind of suck, and over here, Nagor needs to have bad or neutral karma. Um, Chitsa needs good karma for this one as well. I like that war sport, which is pretty nice. There's not very much around here, man. Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed, man. Oh, we didn't do this one, but whatever. <coughs> Mercenary training tech. She has bad karma. She's going to stay with bad karma. I think... Because we have a year with this, these people. I'm going to do this one. She needs to have good karma. Mm. Karma doesn't really matter too much. Okay, so where, where is she right now? She is manipulative. Dimitri and Nagor are kind of nice. Cause, but she needs bad karma to do some of her stuff over here as well. I don't want to do her immediately again. So maybe, let's start over here. The general on duty, we'll go with the people. Nagor the humble warrior, leave the council. The general on duty. The first thing Nagor did was get to work. He knew that as a council leader, he would have a grueling year of work ahead of him. He was thankful for the people around him most of all. The progress our royal will make in the coming year was due to primarily just steadfast dedication. And power armor is level 2. Vehicles, robots is only level 2 as well. I mean, I don't know why you can do this if you don't go any higher. Maybe you can get higher? I don't know. Um, deploying the Merry Men. The Merry Men were created as an offshoot of the Aurorian militia following the end of the Chosen One's quest. Originally devised as a corps of engineers, they have since become Nagor's personal problem solvers, dealing with infrastructure and housing crises across the tribal lands. That's like a boy and his dog, because I do want to go mo uh, automated warfare, but we'll see. That's not bad for organization. Sometimes. People thought it was a bit odd that Nagor always named his dog Smoke. To most, it wasn't a concern. Nagor clearly loved Smoke, even if he named Smoke, he could refer to a dog from any number of different generations. Chits and a few others. He whispered that it was related to some childhood trauma, as if he was trying to make up for what had happened to his first dog. In truth, the type of thinking wasn't fair to Nagor. To him, Smoke wasn't the fourth, fifth, uh, different dog he kept through his life. Smoke was one conscious. Passed down from generation to generation, that's why every time Smoke grew old and got wounded while hunting, was exposed to too much radiation. Nagor never dared to spare it. He was sad, to be sure, since he could see that Smoke was clearly in a lot of pain, but he always knew that he'd find Smoke again soon. The other thing Nagor truly feared now was how he would find Smoke when his turn came. He was a good boy. Maybe he went about treasure from wife, his great head. Political power and stability? Yes, please. Awesome, awesome. <coughs> infrastructure. Captain infrastructure. We're going to be building this up anyways. We could do this one. Yeah, why not? Seed selection. Um, we got five research slots, so it just means it makes it super easy for us to try to build things. And I decided to have them establish themselves, so. Why not? We're going to use robots. We're going to do this one, so. And we have a couple ships here, too. Build bombs with these guys. Cancel the leader switches. Oh, we'll cancel the leader switches or greatly... Oh, karma will greatly increase. Look at Dimitri. Oh, it's karma will increase. Dimitri. Oh, we got our blessed land. Crap. So, that stuff was not easy to do. Aid. Technology. You can do this one. It's fine for now. Get rest of flight. Nice. Get them better fighters. And it's a year ahead of time. We've got five research slots. Whatever. Recruit recruitment workshops? Yeah, why not? That seems pretty good. If in desperate need, Nagor also authorized to recruit healthy workers from the general civilian body. The situation would have been no I way ideal, but may, may allow us to raise additional hosts and reserves. Ooh, to redeploy army builders. Our have been blessed with peace ever since the events of the oil rig. Still, Nagor had been capable of prepared wars for both peace and war. The army builders made up a sizable portion of the military's manpower, but could be used to kickstart new infrastructure projects when needed. Redeploy army manufacturers. A force of specialized weaponsmiths was hired and maintained by Nagor's army. Ensuring access to quality weapons in times of crisis or scarcity if needed, uh, these weaponsmiths could be assigned to a variety of jobs bolstering or and supply lines. Never forget. Even as he grows old, Nagor has found the fear of the enclave vertebrates impossible to forget. The terror of those giant metal men still leaves him shaking a wicked night, and he has vowed to never allow his tribe to reduce to such a stake again. Or state. The Geezer's Rebellion. Look at this picture, wow. I've run a work tower, so to modern, try to modernize and industrialize Umbra's tribe, but despite overwhelming popular support, I know we're religious hardliners have refused to accede to power. Or accede to the process, at least. This uh, s discord struck a high point this week, when a number of elderly warriors and shamans took up arms in the easternmost Kirby area, driving out tribal warriors loyal to Avron. 
Well, the situation has escalated into a civil war, the increasing autonomy of the eastern regions, along with Avron's failure to assert control over, but that made the possibility near inevitable. Avron has contacted the Rowan Council for support, hoping we'll be able to solve the crisis. They seem alarmed, but at least for a bunch of old people. So, this is Umbra. And we have a bunch of influence already, and coercion, so... Uh, what do we want? Secure the border with them. I just want to annex them. Like, I want to annex everybody, but we're going to be nice. So with this, we already have a lot of influence, so we'll just continue with influence then. But we lose stability that way. It's just so much easier to do this one. I don't want to lose that much influence. Why do we do that? I'm going to just try to coer coerce them. That honestly might be better. Yeah. Probably the last time, because we can just do this. Oh no, we're out of manpower. Oh no. Well, I guess we're going to secure the board with them. And lose some more influence, get more uh, coercion, so... I guess we'll see what happens. Avron's plea. The loss of control in Kirby forced uh, Avron uh, to turn to the Royal Council for help. He was hesitant at first. Fearing the Chosen One's departure may have signaled an isolationist growth within the tribe. His fears were subdued by the Council, however. Jit said Dimitri Nagor all vowed to support Avron's desire to industrialize any, against any dissenters in the, from the tribe. Of the three. Nagor was the most passionate, exclaiming that a Royal and Umbra would share the same bond that Solok and the Chosen One did at the beginning. Dimitri recognized the importance of Avron's work, especially since his efforts to create more formalized clinics and medical training. Chits agreed with the other two, but kept a sly look about her throughout the council session. At a brief discussion, the council broke for the evening. Of course, we'll be there. Coercion, Chits' plan, a royal aid our neighbor for a cost. Yeah, we'll do that one. And with the next event, too. Um, which will be good. Very, 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 very good. Hopefully it'll pop up soon, but you never know. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Still no manpower, but whatever. Um, yeah, we'll just keep building ourselves up. Not much has really changed. Deploy the Merrymen. Um, doing all of these focuses, restoring these guys. Uh, Nagora needs to have worse karma. So, where's the good karma stuff? She needs to have good karma. I don't know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll get influence just to have better karma, maybe. That's probably the thing we've got to shoot towards, I suppose. CNC robots? Command and control, huh? Armor is not very good. Motorization is pretty good, though. So it's going to be motorized. Ooh, you know what? We'll get that because we can. And ships? Why not? Just why not? I hate how it's taking forever for the thing to pop up. Choose his plan. She was the first one to meet with Avron after the council ended. Her idea was rather simple. Umbra would allow Nagor and a royal military to establish permanent bases across the territory. We'll also give a royal strong grip over Umbra. The advantage to Avron was clear. Still, just worried that it might be too upfront. If Avron grew resistant too quickly, any future deals might, would be far harder to agree upon. We'll gain get in coercion for now. Just as well as uh, friendly to overtures. Um, gain ten coercion with Umbro. Well, we got it, which is a great thing. Dimitri's options. Avron was surprised by Dimitri's proposal instead of a violent confrontation with the traditionalists. Dimitri advocated for an education campaign across Umbro's population. While any hardline tribals would oppose the idea, he figured that most people would be receptive to it. And so long as they were able to reach Umbro's populace, whether or not tribal leaders directly approve of modernization would matter little. But the majority of the population, especially the young, were educated technology and industry would be impossible to keep out. That's a plan, gain influence, which is not bad. There's a few caps. Can you show force? Eh, that's a plan C. Do we get it? We do get a it. A show of will. The old timers were working to undo everything the Chosen One and Selected worked towards. Not only was it a span in the faces of ancestors they claimed to care so much about, it was in front of the Chosen One themselves. Nagor would not allow us to stand, not now, not ever. He could work with Avaron, but it might even be better to attack the enemy directly, despite what Avaron might think. His rage consumed him, sabotage was ordered. Gain coercion. He knew what to work with Avron not to spite him. Gain him? Influence with him. That's not bad. Um, we're getting more coercion anyways. Nagora's karma will lower. He's kind. He still, he still has good karma even if we do that. Um, is there anything else around here about Nagor? Neutral. Elites. I don't think there's anything really... I mean, it doesn't really matter for him. Which kind of sucks. Kirby... So with that one and see what happens. Still 45%, which is great. Don't get me wrong, which is awesome. Grandpa Fig Leaf presents demands. Well, the anti-modernization movement in the eastern regions of Umbra so far been largely leaderless. One elder has begun to emerge as a de facto head of the movement. Grandpa Fig Leaf, an elder dating from Solix Eris, presented a list of ten demands to Avron and the other members of the Tribal Council. These demands include the resignation of Avron as a tribal elder, permanent rejection of industrialization, and greater autonomy for the eastern regions. While well, Avron's been willing to concede on some points, refused the majority of them. Grandpa Fig Leaf in turn now falls under the ban of the tribe of Eastern Umbra, an autonomous part of Umbra's tribe. We'll send more supplies to everyone who need our help. Increase our border presence and watch closely. Very closely. Gain coercion. We're already at 50%. Let's go with this one. 
Um, just because I want to get it over 40%, maybe, if possible, because I will increase coercion, but then take coercion away and gain influence, but... Alone? You can have alone? How much money do we got? 56,000 ain't bad. So only these types of divisions. Uh, I do want to get robots, but, you know, that's going to take forever to get it, so we'll see what happens. Like I said, if if it push comes to shove, I'll use consequence shall uh, prepare for stuff, so... Or change stuff. Avron prepares for war. Grandpa's fig leaves de declaration to clarify the situation. Avron knew that, that he had mere weeks until the Eastern tribes men entered into the open rebellion. Disheartened that peace no longer seemed like an option, Avron begrudgingly contacted the Oral Council again. Or the war was now inevitable, Nagor's military had two options. They could either deploy with the Umbran forces, or they could gather in joint maneuvers and conduct their own drills on the Eastern Umbra's northern border, threatening a, a pincer attack. <coughs> Most logical route. Must be able to stand on its own. <coughs> well, I'd rather, uh... Coercion's nice. We're at 50% though, so let's get the army XP. As we watch them kill each other off. Yay! Grandpa Figleaf. Oh, he had like no divisions, huh? First strike. With the war now on the rise, members of the Royal Military decided, or Council needed to decide how to, the war, well, how to begin the war. The simplest option would be to wait for an enemy attack and respond in kind, while this would prove a clear justification of the conflict. They feared that such an attack might catch them off guard, given the rebel forces of upper hand in the conflict's opening stages. A preemptive attack could be launched, but it would be difficult to explain to Avron, who still hoped for a peaceful resolution. But the third option as well, the rebel attack would be fabricated or provoked in a key location. The war could be framed as a defensive struggle while retaining the initiative in battle. Spend this time stockpiling emergency supplies? Ooh, gain influence. Eh, I kind of don't get 40 influence at this point. Um, bad karma. Nagor would coordinate closely with Avron's defenses. Nagor will get and more defense. That's not bad. Support equipment. Eh, get more influence for now. The day arrives. Avron's worst fears have come true. He known from this from the outset that this was a possibility, but stubbornly believed that he could make his people see uh, reason. He had failed. Grandpa Figleaf's warriors had swarmed across the board, demanding the return of the Grand Bone as a symbol of the tribal leadership, the death of Avron, the rejection of modernization, a royal honoring the pleasure to Avron. As intervened on Umbra's behalf, wars come to Umbra. Honor Alliance? We've learned to... Oh, through these months we've learned to learn. What else have we had? You know, might as well, right? Come on down, see what we can do. We're at war now, but I don't think we can do anything here, yeah. We might as well just go to well with the army. See what you can do. It's only infantry, but they're not that they're really not good at all. But whatever. Oh, I was gonna say, like, can we just go to Kirby? But we'll see. Song for the front of you owner, but that was good. Have we could use more war support, of course. Once we get maxed out war support, then we'll do uh the political power one. That's usually what we do. <coughs> you go in there, cut that division off, that'd be great. And oh come on man, come on Broski, Broski. I guess let's, 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 I forget which one's the next one. Oh, that's refugees, that's fine. Whatever. Clamp down autonomy. Eh, exploit. I like exploiting people. Um, political actions are nice. What's that calling? Good, good, good. There you go. Eureka Bay. Travel advice. I don't know what's wrong with Eureka, but it must be under some sort of curse. Addicts, dealers, and more addicts are on the streets. The whole place is kind of a gloomy, dumpy mill town that some gaudy Victorian architecture admits to cast off to Northern California. I can't wait to leave. I can only hope that a second great war will vastly improve the living conditions of the area. Waste on travel log, volume 3. Sounds like a fun time. Just in case. Also, um, I don't want to use robots, but we just don't have any yet. Go with that one, go with that one. Go with that one since we're still using infantry as well. And we could use army XP, you know. Army XP is pretty useful. I just want to lower stability. Having no map is like really gamey, but still. Oh, cool. Thanks. I'll take it. Oh, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Rebellion crushed. The Gazer's Rebellion, which had racked the Oregon tribe of Umbra for nearly half a year, now is over. The remaining war surrendered to the combined Umbra and Oroyan forces today. Grandpa Fickley has fl fled across the Packers' border, and now that the leader of the traditions have realized they have no path to victory. All that remains to get is to set out with a new path for the eastern area of Umbra. The ties forged between Umbra and Roy permanently place the tribe under Oroyal's wing, meaning the decision lies in the hands of the council. The state can see its force is clear to accommodate a new industry, but it might benefit a royal more to see it used as a supply path for any future southern conflicts. Does uh, industrialization uh, first priority? Be certain to accommodate future expansion. Honestly, uh, we could always get more infrastructure here. This is just better to do. We need more slots unlocked, so because we'll run out of places to build. So we got to build, 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 build. Um, anything else here? Not too much. Guns are fine. We have no manpower, but that's by design. Um, so yeah, not bad. With the backs to paradise, of course, karma will increase. 
But we need chitas too. Huh. Biplane fighter's nice. Just didn't grab I'll get some of that too. Come over here. Um, recon, because you can. Because why not? Biplane fighters. And tank rifles, absolutely. On the infantry at the very least. Yeah. Tribal means. They're not really going to need that one at all. An army for the people. A royal's army serves only the people. It cannot possibly serve the interests of any force but them. And over their overwhelming support of the armed forces confirms this. Hey. With our eyes on the enemies. You lose defense, get better consumer goods factories, or you get more repair speed and defense. Nagora's karma will increase, but Nagora's karma will lower. Um, right now, it's pretty high, it's pretty helpful, which is pretty nice. So, I think it would be okay if we did go with lowering it. Frontline doctors, I like that one too, but you need tribal means. You can always increase it later, so with our eyes on enemies. The best defense is a good offense. Waiting for enemies to appear and take us by surprise won't lead us to split destruction. We strike decisively, eliminating potential threats. Shepherding our swords. Oh, we need bad karma for this one. Raising our shields. I mean, both of these are just not very useful. A reliable warfare. Supplies this essence of warfare. Providing the best possible materials will dictate our successes in battle. And Nagora has gone great lengths to personally supervise logistical efforts in the Royal Army. Stripping away fear. The metal men are just that men, and all men bleed no matter what armor they wear or weapons they wield. We'll show our words uh, through uh, high powered rifles. Oh god. Oh god. Uh, each specifically is going to crack open their armor like a tin can. Also, we were working on trying to get Chitza's karma higher, but Merry Men construction. <laughs> the Merry Men have done a fine job building schools and jobs across the nation. They designed their work in insightful ways, allowing for the last minute or purposing of infrastructures for any use needed. Having completed their most recent work and moving to their next project, that's all that's left to assign is the building's purpose. That requires aid for its people. And then that term must not expand to meet, meet our enemies. Um, I like the cities a lot. But we can use another one, both this one. Cheers from Y. Yes, please. Uh, unreasonable demands, and break out of max sec. Frightening news reached us this morning from one of Chita's re uh, sources in Medford. A massive breakout stage in Medford a number of nights ago, and a sizable portion of max sec's prison population managed to escape into the wastes. The prison government has obviously attempted to keep this under wraps, but the information our sources has gleaned inform suggested a superhuman named Wiggs, a former member of Master's Army, later turned out law led the revolt. While Max Sack's security hunts down the escapees or folks who remain protecting our citizens, border defense can only do so much, and it seems that proactive steps may be necessary. The worst criminals of the West Coast were all kept together. Now we can invest in Max Sack. Um, so Max Sack, 10% influence, more coercion. It's just so much easier to do coercion stuff. I don't know. I, I kind of wish we could do something else. Like, can you lose infantry equipment for influence or lose, spend political power for mass amount of political power or something like that? I don't know. That's all about balance and stuff, but like, still. I'm just going to keep doing coercion stuff. You both, maybe? I don't want to lose any stability, though. More war sport, which is nice. I'll do it at least once. Aye, aye, aye. How much input? Eh, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Um, no outside volunteers. We'll go to outside auxiliaries, outside of battalions. That'd be good eventually. Mac Sec. And Medford. But we'll see with all this stuff here. Um, we'll try to keep lowering, increasing Chitta's karma, but there's no guarantees, obviously. Uh, I'm going to do that one too. Why not? You might as well. An army for the people. The army special forces. Originally, the Trouble Wars were only the forces stood to defend a royal from wandering beasts and exterior threats. Those sounds have long passed, but the idea of an elite group of warriors spearheading a royal warfare certainly have not. <coughs> our own metal men. The technology of the Enclave Force is, is now within our grasp. Uh, advancements by our scientific corps have allowed us to begin construction of power armor similar to theirs. Its quality is far worse, at least for now, but it's sure sign of gro our growing power. Prisoners stream across the border. The Maxec Warden's attempts at rounding up the escaped prisoners seem to only have incurred their flight from the territory. Early yesterday morning, a number of wounded Maxec officers followed closely by a band of pursuing prisoners across into Royal. Our border is secured to engage a portion of the prisoners in a brief battle, but the majority seem to escape into our territory. Our choices now stem from each of these three leaders' perspectives. Dimitri is focused on making something of the wounded officers, which well, is has drawn up emergency plans according to the capture of the escaped prisoners. Nagor, meanwhile, has urged both of them to agree to new security measures, including a drastic increase in military funding. Dimitri went out. Strong influence. Command. Prisoner for capturing another hunter to the border. <coughs> Excuse me. Good karma. We'll lose, co lose coercion. I like that stability. That's pretty good. But because his good karma, we'll gain strong influence. This might be 10 influence, which is really hard to get. I don't want to lose any coercion, which doesn't even matter. Which would also be a better choice here, but um, strong influence is that 10%, which is not bad. Um. 
Are we mobilizing more? We are mobilizing more, huh? Do that one. Do that one too. We're gonna lose our stability. We're gonna really max out Mac Sec here, probably. Danger close. A royal and scout's place in Mac Sec territory have been forced to flee in the face of an ever approaching sentry bot. The robot seemed to have somehow malfunctioned or even been hacked, and is now heading straight for royal territory. Even though it's alone, the robot's formidable armor and missile launcher have made it all but imperious against our scout's attempts to halt it. It's spoils of war. The war savage and ignoble beast. The guards learned that well enough. But he's also learned that war can bring wealth. Uh, and profit. The balance between the two is cruel, but whatever war might bring riches to a royal. Actually, he's, he's, oh, Nagor is now neutral. Oh, now he definitely can't do this one. Interesting. The major robotic experts shut it down. But it says we have good karma. Strong, strong influence, that's good. Uh, bad influence, we get more war support, which is great. We would get more attack, but we're gonna do this one because it doesn't cost anything. We got, we got manpower out of that. <clears throat> and now we're at 40%, which is great. So we can stop lowering our stability. Well, we'll see what the rise of whose gang up until now. The prisoners who had managed to escape Mac Sec prisons have been disorganized at the least. While there were often gangs of five to ten prisoners working together, they were just as likely to attack each other as the guards trying to round them up. The burdens of Who's, and his gang average completely shifted the dynamic within Mac Sec. A littering of massive super mutant Who's and a number of his fellow muties began to recruit smaller prisoner gangs to their cause. There seemed to be little cause for alarm as the gang had maintained a total isolation camp or isolated camp within the nearby forest. Yet yeah, last night, Who's gang assaulted and annihilated a heavily fortified Mac Sec outpost. As far as we can tell, whose gang showed no sign of stopping and is slowly making their way towards the main prison structure. Due to the urgent nature of this crisis, a response falls to the elected council leader. Thought it was clear enough, Nagor rallied his army and marched against whose gang. With his troops drawn up, Nagor waited for the best opportunity to strike, and Nagor waited patiently for the for whose to engage Max Sec. Only then he did he attack. Well, we're still going to stay with helpful for now, just because that's probably what we could do. Oh, oh, never mind. Never mind. Who's land? Whose army made mis mincemeat of the Max Sec defenders, despite the best efforts of the remaining guards, along with a small militia of those looking to defeat Who's range of terror? The gang broke through their lines with a little difficulty. Who's has declared the remaining prisoners to be free and place them all under his protection. Max Sec's neighbors have responded fearfully and his former patrons have fled Cal to California and Nevada, seeking shelter from the prison madness. Anyone sympathetic to the old regime, as well as anyone suspected of being so, is quickly being rounded up and massacred by a horde of bloodthirsty inmates. Savages. Oh, another green. Look at that. Uh, ooh, who's? Who's gang? His gang. And of course, next we'll come up with. Did we dispose of war, which is nice? Um, honestly, let's see. Probably this one. Basic melee equipment, infantry equipment, basic, super basic stuff. Invest in whose land? Well, we don't need any more influence, really. The who's conundrum? Violent ensembles of uh, of murders and criminals tend to make poor neighbors. While who's has so far been content to loot and burn what remains of Max Set. No one doubts he'll eventually turn his eyes towards us, as who's abuses amount. It seems clear that war will break out soon. Luckily, the network of influence we built across Max Set, as well as the grip we hold over a number of former officials, may still be useful. With enough influence and coercion, we'll be able to bring the remnants of Max Set's forces across the border and give us an edge in the coming conflict. Waste no time, we must strike before we can. Refugees from Max Set will be more willing to fight. Oh, we get more manpower. I like that a lot. Ooh, also, we need to get another army. So we'll be, and we're gonna go with sent. A royal is a paradise, but I built through the miracles of the Gek and labor of the royal people. Oh, we're safe in a royal. We're planning a royal. So why do people wonder? Why do we keep expanding? The reasons were clear at first. Our allies needed help, since then things become less clear. Every day it's become harder to justify our expansion of wars, but each day also brings more of it, trapping us in a spiral of increasing involvement outside our travel home. You know, so much we're trying to get both of these here at the same time. So. Um, give us a couple days, get some more organization first, and we'll probably just go straight on in. Uh, against these guys. Oh god. And there we will go. Should do alright, especially in the center here. We only have one robot division, and even then it's not that great, but you know, whatever. Loan repayment, I love it. That funny money. Should still be able to break through. With you guys, I want you to go straight to Medford. I want you guys to go straight down there too. That'll be great. Oh, all of our armies going there. Okay. Well then, whatever. Reliable warfare, yay! Where the heck are you guys all going? Oh, you go here too. Might as well do that. <coughs> Keep everyone in place. Oh, we're running out of energy cells as well. Who's land? I mean, there's no point in doing that now. Council Royal, we're neutral. Choosing a leader. Okay, so now we could choose someone else if we really wanted to. Hold that column, close out of that one. Um, we never got here. We never got to finish all this stuff too, which, which sucks. Her way, elites. Wayne coercion with four ways. I guess we must well try Chitza next. Even though I did do her before, I did do him as well. I think so. I think next time we would do Chitza because she always has bad karma. So 
Clear the right pick to get, get, guide the council. We've got a couple days left before we need to do anything else, though. Come on, guys. You gotta win somewhere here. I'm gonna for tell you to force the attack. That's good. Keep pushing, keep pushing. If you take Medford, that's probably the biggest thing we really need, so. Stonks, nice. Vacuum tubes. I. Uh, we can't. Uh, well. I guess we're gonna cancel this one. Flames, look at the sky. Yes, the Emitter Village uh, met the forest people of the Packers for the first time. They woke this morning to flames drifting up the forest to their south. No doubt they thought it a terrible accident. Hours later, they noticed a small band approaching the direction. Thinking they might be refugees from our fire, our people approached them with blankets, food, and water. They would ask us to do this as well. The survivors tell us that that was when the slaughter began. And while we still don't know what caused the fire or why the Packers have left the forest to attack us, we must respond to the situation at hand. Uh. Reports indicate that these battles extend beyond minor raids and engulf almost all the communities alongside the forest. Oh. They go to war with Umbra and Arroyo. Wait, what? Bruh. Bruh. Are you kidding me right now? Come on. Her way. As everyone else filed out of the council chambers, Chitza sat quietly and thought. She got exactly what she wished for a council leader. She would free reign and pursue a number of the avenues she was interested in. You should be able to completely break these guys. Come on. Uh, I'm probably going to use Consequence. I don't know. A Royal, like I said last time, just needs another little, little look-see. Because this has just been... It's not been great. It really has not been. You know what? Don't go there. Take out the capital. Come on. Both of you don't go there. Both of you help support the attack here. I won't be able to get them. I don't think we'll be able to get them yet. Packers are attacking, which I do not want us to do at all yet. This is so stupid. But that's not up to me. So I'm going to do some weird cons command stuff probably. Because this is this needs to be... It's kind of redone, but... Doris Warbands. The den had been a tumor in Arroyo and trade. As an alternate route to the north, it offered trade's method to avoid Arroyo markets. Just as spies had the previous few years making contact with the raiders in Doris and allowing them to pay, her off to pay them off to step up the raids and re traders in the region. But I'm going to end the episode there. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will continue with Arroyo. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.